Hey, my name is Dan. Welcome back to the shop. And today I'm still working on this wing, despite the garage being of multi-use right now. I've still got, you might hear a fan blowing over there because I've got it uh, working on the table that I'm staining, yet another one. And, uh, but today what I wanna do is I wanna start finishing up the wing so I got it ready to go travel to the new shop, which will be early next week. But uh, for right now, we're just trying to finish up get everything is, is completely done so that I've got less parts to pack up. So gonna work on the wing here and then eventually the aileron and the flaps, hopefully have those all done before the move. But today, I wanna concentrate on this section here. This is that dihedral that I was talking about previously. And what we need to do is prepare it because now that I put on the sheeting and you can see here, this is the exit hole where the uh, aileron servo is gonna sit. But what we do is we end up putting this fiberglass that came in the kit and it's going to wrap the center piece like so. So I was thinking, well, okay, they recommend in there to go ahead and use CA for this. It just makes it into a super crispy critter and uh, putting out that much CA fumes, if it would be done obviously with uh, thin, which would hold it down. But I mean, it's really gonna fume up the place. Um, and I've done CA for fiberglassing in the past and eh, I just don't really like it. But I also am thinking, I don't think I really wanna to go to the steps of setting up an epoxy so that we can uh, just do this little strip. It's gonna go all the way around on either side. But I wanna try something else. Uh, lately I've been looking into a lot of fiberglassing using something like this. This is polyacrylic from Minwax and it is water-based. It's a, it's a plastic that is well, water base. That means it cleans up with water and everything. But I used it on a project several years ago where I had to do some fiberglassing on it and it worked out really well. And I know that a friend of mine over in Medford, uh, John, he uses it for covering a lot of his uh, finished uh, scale airplanes that have sheeting where you actually cover the whole plane in like a three quarter ounce type of uh, fiberglass. And so I know that he's been using it uh, so today what I want to do is I want to go ahead and try it on here and we're going to try using it without um, using a sander, uh, a sanding base under it. Hey, welcome back to the shop. It's really good to see you here again. This is a sanding sealer and basically what it is is a uh, it's a lacquer that's clear and you use it when you're going to be putting down uh, like a water-based paint or something like that. The purpose of it is is to go ahead and seal up the wood and uh, it does it with lacquer like I said so that means that any cleanup has to be done with mineral spirits and so forth. But you can lay this down and then sand on it to smooth it out and then boom you could go ahead and put your water-based uh, paint over the top of it and it won't swell the wood. And that is our biggest risk here by using a water-based type polyacrylic on it because once again, it is water-based. So that means when it gets into this, especially in balsa and so forth, it is going to be raising the grain and swelling the wood a little bit. It could warp it. But what I wanna to try today, and John told me he does this and I just, I haven't asked him how he does it, but he says that he doesn't use a sealer or anything underneath it. He just goes right on top of the wood. And I think I figured out how it works. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this polyacrylic and we're gonna put down a super light coat, just a super duper light coat, just barely getting the whole thing wet. But by doing that, you're putting it down, it's not really swelling the wood up. And then once that is sealed on there, it's gonna be a plastic to work with from that point on. So what I plan to do is go ahead and coat this down with a super light coat, let it dry. And then the next one, we can just go ahead and, and put the fiberglass on it and paint over the top of it. And that really wet coat of the fiberglass from the polyacrylic going through the fiberglass and so forth, sticking it down and so forth. I love that word and so forth. By taking and putting that down um, with a wet coat over the top of it and having that undercoat that we already put on there, the nice light coat, should keep it from swelling the wood underneath it. So let's give it a whack and see how it goes. All right, so here we are all closed in on this seam here that we're gonna be working with. And once again, 
The cloth is going to be draped over this with roughly about an inch of span, so we'll go a little bit wider on either side of this. But uh, here is the polycrylic, and once again, this is the, the Minwax brand. There is one from Bear as well. It's the same thing, and it looks exactly the same. If you'll see in there, it looks kind of like milk. A uh, very different look to it than uh, you would think. It's not like a, the clear polyurethanes where it's a, uh, a very clear or, or kind of amber color. So anyways, what I'm going to do is just get enough on this brush so that we can lightly brush this. Ah, oh, geez. Man. Just very lightly brush it on. I'm not trying to soak this by any means. We'll tap, tap. And I'm going, I'm going to try to go about an inch on either side of the middle section. If I get it on there a little too thick, I'm going to wipe as much of it away as I can very quickly. Just a super, super light coat. Painting like this. I feel like Bob Ross. Okay, we're going to, we're going to paint some very light, very light, happy, happy glue spots. Okay, I think that that's pretty much there. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do the end point as well. Because this cloth is going to wrap around the airfoil completely. All right, so that's pretty much it. I'm going to go out a little bit wider right here. That's it, right there. We've got the uh, coverage we need. And I'm just gonna let that dry. I'm gonna let it dry for about two hours. Once that is dry, that should be well enough so that when we go ahead and put on the um, fiberglass and then go ahead and soak it through, it shouldn't damage anything here. I better get the leading edge as well. Like I said, it's going to wrap all the way around this. This is the bottom part. Now, little secret that I'm going to let you in on is I already did the top part. I did it last night, and it's already done. So we are ready to basically go all the way around this whole thing and um, cover it with fiberglass. So we'll go ahead and let this dry, and then I'll come back and bring you back over, and we'll go ahead and uh, start laying some fiberglass down. All right, welcome back. Uh, we are here to... Start working this. What I did was I went ahead and uh, the bottom part is the part I just uh, covered. This is the top part. Like I said, I did this last night. So I figured, well, I'll just go ahead and flip it over. And I want to lay glass on the top part anyways first. Uh, and then it will wrap around to the bottom where the uh, finished flap will be facing aft on the wing, uh, which is the way that I want it to end out anyway. So what I've got is this is the 28 inch piece of a ribbon and it's going to go around it and tie up at the bottom so let's get the top done just roughly figure it to be about half it really doesn't matter where that seam is going to be on the bottom so uh, it'll overlap at some point and everybody will be happy 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 uh, anyways let's do so what i'm going to do is i'll go ahead and start by wetting this down just a little bit with the polyacrylic. And what this is gonna do is, I just wanna wet it down enough so that I can kinda get the, the uh, fiberglass ribbon kinda anchored. So we just need to make it moist. Just a little bit moist, and let's see here. Go ahead, and this feels good about here. And you can see the center seam right through the fiberglass. I think this is like, I don't know, it's got to be like one or one and a half ounce. It's not, th it's not three quarter, that's for sure. So I'm just kind of sealing it down to that little stripe of polyacrylic that I put down. Now that that is pretty much where I want it, I guess we can go ahead and go to town on saturating it. I'll just give it some heavier coverage here. 
Oh, this is going to be nice. And the nice thing about this, as compared to like the epoxy, the epoxy would take several hours, probably about five or six at least in this temperature. Uh, most of the time when I use uh, like finished epoxy on fiberglass, I end up letting it go overnight. And uh, that does it about right. But okay, so I've got the first coat on there. I'm gonna stop this right there. And make sure you kind of put some downward pressure on it because I want it to be able to wrap that corner when we when the time comes to do that. Uh, I don't see any really eh. making sure there isn't any serious bubbles or anything on the edges here and I'm not seeing anything. I can see like where they it looks like this fiberglass has like a tuck under on the side where they doubled it. It's not just a straight on piece of fiberglass. It's like a ribbon. All right, so that is that. We're going to let that dry. Um, and actually, I will probably put on another coat or two. Like I said, this stuff dries very quickly. Um, in about an hour, it'll be ready for its next coat again. This first coat is used to mostly anchor it down. And then the following coats are going to be used to be more of a kind of a gloss or a filler into the uh, fiberglass itself. So there, I'm done for now. We'll be back when it comes time to put the second coat on. All right, so here we are in day two. And uh, I'm just kind of looking over this here. This uh, I put actually about three coats on this now and it looks really good. And just then I get a phone call. Hey, it's a new day here. Um, I've actually put three coats on this joint now and it's looking pretty good. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit here and I'll go ahead and show you what I'm looking at. It's pretty amazing. It's, it's worked out very well. I'm not seeing any swelling up uh, or anything like that of the wood once that first coat was down. Now I'll go ahead, I went ahead and did the top. I'm gonna to do the bottom today and I'll try to do a little bit of that on camera for you. Uh, just to show you how that lays out. It doesn't take very long. Uh, I will note this though, that if you ever decide you want to use the Minwax or the polycry polycrylic type thing for um, for your, like if you were to do a fiberglassing job that you were going to eventually paint over, the trick is when you're painting over fiberglass, you really want to fill the weave up so that you can't see all these little cross hatches and everything in here. Now, the polycrylic is really thin, so there's not much media. I, I imagine you could probably just keep going over it with coat after coat after coat. I have no idea how many coats of that stuff it would take to completely smooth out the weave in it. But you could add some other things to it, like you could add some of those micro balloons or even like uh, another filler called Cabasil and just kind of mix it in with the stuff that you're painting on there and that will help fill up the weave over time. But in this case, not a big deal because this is all gonna be covered with a plastic film anyway. So no big deal about the, the uh, weave being you know detectable. Uh, it's not really an issue with this. So I'm gonna go ahead now and uh, we'll go ahead and, and uh, start working on the bottom side of it. And let's see the bottom side. I just kind of left it from the other day. So let's flip it and go over, see what that looks like right now. Oh yeah, I forgot I magneted that round part that was pulling over the leading edge so it would make a nice tight profile as it was drying and not put an air bubble under there. Okay, so this is the bottom side. This is uh, when I started. Uh, and running your hand over it, you know, it did kind of raise up the grain just a little bit, but not much. It is kind of rough. So what you want to do after you lay down that first coat is this is 100 grit sandpaper. I'm just gonna run it over there. I'm running it completely the wrong way against the grain and everything. But all I wanna do is just kinda smooth it out. 
just a tiny bit. It doesn't need to be super precision work. I just want to knock down any big, like I'm thinking dust particles or sawdust that might've got under it. And it doesn't take much effort to make that all nice and smooth. I mean, just in what I did here, that feels really darn smooth. A little bit of dust from it. But um, anyways, let's go ahead and I will start working on the bottom. What we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this around. So we're just gonna do a complete wrap. And what I wanna do is I wanna bring this one forward and then I wanna have this one finish up with the overlap over the top of the, the back half. So not that it really matters, but I want it to be a, a nice smooth because when this is all covered and everything, it's really not gonna matter, but I like to have the tab for the way the air goes over the wing. It, this is such an OCD thing. It really is not gonna make any difference, but that's the way I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna go ahead and set it up that way. So a little bit of trimming. You can see that the, I'm gonna go ahead and smooth up the trim for this piece here. Oh man, and it's still unraveling. Kind of weird how you can never get all of the fiberglass strands cut. Well, there's always one that hangs out and then wants to unfray the whole deal. All right, I'll go ahead and zoom up just a little bit here and see if, I wanna make sure that you can see what I'm doing. Center and bring it up again. Okay, so there we have it, I got that. And uh, so next step we'll go ahead, I'm gonna prep the uh, polyacrylic to be put on there. And uh, we'll go ahead and brush her on. All right, so the polyacrylic is out. One nice thing about this, since it is water-based, is I've been using this foam brush, and typically foam brushes to me are like one-use things. You just use them one time and then toss them and get another one. You can usually buy like these ones. I think I got at Harbor Freight a long time ago. Super cheap. I mean, I think I got a packet of like uh, 15, 20 of them for just like a couple of bucks. But uh, the nice thing about it is, is I've been using this same one over and over. As soon as I get done applying a coat, I just simply run inside and uh, wash this out in the sink. So here's the next one. And we're gonna go ahead and just make sure we fill up the uh, fiberglass weave so that it's wet all the way through down to the wood. And you kind of want to watch for bubbles as you're doing this. You don't want too many bubbles underneath there. You want to try to work them out to the edges and make sure that the surface is well saturated underneath there. That's how you saturate it. It just pushes it right through when you do it like that. Then you smooth out the stroke and see how you did. And then afterward, once I get everything set, I've been taking and putting on a rubber glove and just kind of running my finger down there to push any bubbles out of the seams that are gonna be a problem. So I can see all right now I'm already missing. So we're going to, I wanna to try to OCD this a little bit here and recenter that. Oh, it's much better that way. Okay, now it's working well. And once again, being a little bit, you can be really wet with this coat because uh, you're trying to saturate that fiberglass, make sure it is soaked all the way through with the resin, the polyacrylic. Whole thing kind of shifted over on me on that last. Yeah. That OCD kicking in again. I want that to be a, kind of a straight line. <laughs> okay. Looking good, nice and wet. And we're gonna bring the front end and we'll go right over the top of it. And try to do this. Looks like I gotta trim this front end. It's got a nice long straggler hanging off it too. So let's go ahead and put down a nice base wet stripe underneath here for it to land on. <laughs> it's 
always, always, always a troublemaker. Fiberglass is so hard to cut a straight line in, I swear it wanders away from the scissor blades as you do it. Okay, here we go. I'm going to come straight back and set it right over the other piece there. Like I said, totally OCD. It's not going to matter. It's not going to, it's not going to unravel in the air if I did it backward. And there will be no airstream actually touching this fiberglass unless something catastrophic has happened. Lay down a little bit extra in that area where the two pieces of fiberglass overlap. I'm going to make sure that we get up in the front end here and saturate the part coming around the leading edge. And that is pretty much it. Um, I'll go ahead and let this sit now. It's like, uh, I'll come out and put another coat on it probably in about, a, I've been letting it sit for about two hours. I've got a fan that'll blow a nice constant stream of air across it. But um, other than that, this, this is pretty darn easy. It just takes a little bit of time uh, to let it set up. But like I was saying before, using this polycrylic, it sets up so much faster than epoxy would because that it says 15 minute epoxy on it. It's like hours before it is uh, nice and, you know, um, crisply done so that you could start sanding on it and reshaping it or, uh, it takes a while before you're able to put a second coat on it. So the, I don't know where they get 15 minute. It doesn't take 15 minutes. It takes hours before that um, finished epoxy will actually cure to a state where you can use it. So anyways, I'll go ahead and let this sit now and probably throw on a couple other coats here. I'll probably do in a couple hours, I'll do one more coat and then maybe one more after that. And this is it for this. I'll maybe sand lightly on it, but not much because like I said, this is going to be covered in the plastic film that goes over the wing. No big deal. But this is how you can use uh, something other than an epoxy resin. You can use this polycrylic and it's got a lot of advantages, especially if you're sensitive to fumes or working with chemicals. This is a, a great idea and it's uh, very flexible to use and it's going to be a very strong joint when everything is done. So we'll be back in a while. I'm going to go ahead and use my glove here and kind of push out some of these bubbles. The foam brush is, is good, but it doesn't really, I don't know, it's not a very firm thing for pushing bubbles out of the, out of the surface. So I'm just going to work on a few of these. Don't want to leave. You know, a few bubbles is not bad, but you don't want to have a whole lot of them in there because anywhere there's a bubble in the tape is a place where it's not really adhered to the surface. And if it's big, it could be crucial, but this is not crucial. This is just a bunch of little tiny ones real close to the edge. Everything else here looks really nice. So now I'm going to go ahead and uh, let this kind of uh, cure for a couple hours and then I'll put another coat on it. I'll probably put maybe about two more coats onto this and uh, and then call it good. Got the other wing uh, half to do as well, so I'll get to work on that. But uh, thanks for joining me today. And um, if you have any questions about this or anything, let me know. I just think that there's so many different advantages. I spent a lot of time trying to uh, use non-volatile type chemicals in our hobby because there's a lot of things that we use that put off a lot of fumes and you're exposing yourself to a lot of fumes all the time uh, just doing the, the basic operations of what we're doing with building. There's certain things that you can develop allergies from or, or so forth. So the more of these things that are water-based or fumeless, especially when you're working in a closed-in area, I think the better. So uh, I always am looking to seek out new ways to do things that are, that are not as hazardous to our bodies, I guess. Um, had a lot, over the years, I've had a lot of friends 
that have had complications with respiratory. And I think some of it has to do with the chemicals that we use here. So there's things that you wanna be doing like making sure your shop is ventilated and maybe have some airflow and stuff like that. But this is nice having water-based products. I like this. So anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and let you go. And um, hopefully the next time that I'm putting a video out, it will be in the new shop. All right, see you then.